closely related to this public private key is the digital signature so as I, I explained here okay let me talk about digital signature I'm pretty sure that everyone <coughs> each one of you has heard about digital signature somewhere or the other it's very common that whenever you send some PDF or uh, whenever you are sending some document you say that it is digitally signed or many of the websites say that it is dig digitally signed okay and what this digital signature is that okay someone is saying that all the data in this document are original and has not been tampered at all so when we are digitally signing an a pdf document and we are sending it and we when we send it to someone we send a digital signature and we send the document so what we are making sure is that when the receiver receives the document he receives the document tampered proof so if I've written there A, B, C, D, it should be A, B, C, D. Okay, and that's what digital signature is. So there's some property to go with digital signature. One, only you can sign, but anyone can verify, right? That you should be able to sign the document. So in this case, when you send a digital signature, you sign it and you send it. Then the receiver using the public key, so now it's bit opposite, okay? You are able to sign it, but anyone can verify. That means you will be able to sign it. Then you will send the certificate to the receiver and receiver will be able to verify that. Okay, the signature is correct. Basically, what happens is if I go back to this hash functionality, what you do is you create a document, you create a hash of it and you send it to the receiver. Okay, if the document and what the receiver will do, receiver will take the document, will create the hash again and will match that okay both the hash are same or not so what i'm saying is suppose you are sending a b c okay you as one email you have sent this document in another email you send the hash of it or through some other medium when the receiver will receive it receiver will receive a b c right so what he will do is receiver will create a hash of it again and will match the hash if both the hash matches that means document is right if it not that means the document has been tempered and that's how on a high level how digital signature works another property of digital signature is that signature is always linked to one document and cannot be cut and pasted to any other doc and that's why we talk about hash i said that hash is unique for one particular set of characters okay that's how we if we achieve this property that okay signature that you, you create a hash of the document that is you are creating a unique value which is related to that particular document only no other document or no other uh, uh, series of character can satisfy this property again is that okay although we need not to know much about digital signature but what I'm trying to show here is and what you need to understand is that okay Whenever you have to verify a data, whenever there, are, there is a document or whenever there is a data in the blockchain, you should not verify data one by one. You just verify the hash of two data and if the hash is same, that means the data is right. It is tempered proof. Again, does that make sense? Yes, sir. That's great. okay let's move forward so steps to build digital signature again we need not to go into detail and i think we i've already covered all those things so step one generate public and private key pair design function to create signature and design function to verify signature what these function and how these functions are created you need not to worry you will see that there are so many functions readily available by which using which you can create signature and using which you can verify signature also in the blockchain again what you need to understand how this designate how this digital signature work that is you you we already talked about public and private key okay and again i'm saying that there is a black box there is a function where using which you can create the signature using the public and private key and there's another black box or there's another function using which you can verify the function using the public and private key as long as you understand just this part you will understand blockchain or you will be able to code on blockchain or you will be able to talk blockchain you need not to do any deep dive that okay how how 
does the what is the real mathematical function behind this signature feel free to do it in your free time but you need not to understand all those stuff in order to understand blockchain and also why i'm saying this thing again and again that you need to understand only the high level lots of people when they start reading about blockchain or when they start thinking about blockchain and in lots of document people start describing all these topics into two details they they start doing deep dive they start doing phd doctorate everything into this public and private key thinking that okay unless you don't understand this thing you know deeply you will not be able to understand blockchain but that's not true you just need to understand on a high level that okay what these concepts are and that is more than sufficient really more than sufficient in order to understand blockchain system okay so any questions so far let me know otherwise i'm moving to next topic